Creatine, probably one of the most effective sports supplements available and so popular that I've already done two videos all about it. But it looks like you guys still have a lot of questions, which I'm gonna answer right now. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and you may have seen my previous two videos on what creatine does and how to take it. If not, remember to check them out for even more info on creatine. In the comments of those videos, you guys have asked a lot more questions. How to take it, when to take it, with what, will it make me bald? Let's go through all of them right now. As always, I wanna point out that I'm not recommending any particular creatine supplements. What I am going to do is talk about the current evidence available on creatine. Let's get started. What about taking creatine for 10, 20, or even 30 years? So in my last video on creatine, I mentioned that you don't need to stop taking creatine and it's safe for long-term use. In fact, there are studies of creatine doses as high as 30 grams per day for up to five years without any problems at all. Now, what about if we're talking about longer durations? Well, the truth is we don't have studies that last any longer. Performing even short-term studies is expensive and takes a lot of organization. Doing longer studies is even worse. But in the case of creatine, if we have studies that show absolutely no problems after up to five years in kids, and if there's no biological mechanism by which it could cause a serious problem in healthy people, which there isn't, then it's not uncommon to assume that it'll be fine in the longer term too. Basically, all the evidence we have so far says it's safe in healthy people. What if you don't work out every day? Do you still have to take it? So supplements can have acute and or chronic effects. As an example, caffeine has acute effects because you take it and you experience the results almost immediately, but within 45 to 60 minutes or so. Creatine doesn't work that way. You feel the effects of creatine by saturating your muscle cells with it. This can take up to a week if you load or a few weeks if you take just five grams daily. But the effect is pretty constant once your muscles are loaded. To keep your muscles fully loaded, you need to keep taking creatine every day. In reality, you could probably take it every second day and just double up on the dose. So don't think that you only need to take it on the days that you train. You just need to keep creatine levels high and that has nothing to do with when you train. Can I take it in the evening one day and morning the next? When's the best time? Short answer, yes. You don't need to worry about taking it exactly 24 hours between doses. How long does it take for creatine levels to drop? Will something happen? If your muscles are fully saturated from taking creatine for a while, it can take about four to six weeks for your creatine levels to drop back to normal. In terms of what will happen, not much. You may lose a little bit of weight, which will be water weight, and you may not be able to perform as well in the gym but you're not going to suddenly lose all your gains. Are there other supplements that can have an effect on creatine if you take them at the same time? Potentially, yes. There is some evidence that taking high doses of caffeine together with creatine might blunt the benefits of the creatine. The problem is some research says it does and some research says it doesn't. Creatine can cause stomach upsets in some people, as can high doses of caffeine. Studies combining the two see a lot of people getting upset stomachs too. So it could potentially be that. From a pragmatic standpoint, it might be worth taking creatine separately from high doses of caffeine, doses like five milligrams per kilogram of body weight or more, or reducing your caffeine intake if you already take a lot. If you just have a couple of cups of coffee a day, take your creatine separately from them and it probably doesn't even matter. Can I load for two weeks with a lower dose? You absolutely can. There's nothing magic about loading creatine at all. It just allows you to get more creatine in faster so your muscles get saturated or full with creatine faster and you see results sooner. Just in case it makes a difference, I have never actually told a client to load creatine. Taking the same dose every day is just simpler. It just takes a little bit longer. Stop being so impatient. Can I take it with tea and coffee? Yes but high temperatures can break down creatine. That's why some of the creatine in meat gets broken down when it's cooked. If you wanna take it with tea or coffee, it's probably not an issue as long as you're not heating the water after you put the creatine in. In reality though, it's probably just as easy to take it with a cold drink. What is Creapure and what is micronized creatine? Creapure is a specific form of creatine monohydrate produced by German company Alschem Trustberg. 
and my apologies to all German speakers out there. It's one of the purest creatines available on the market with a purity of 99.9% .9 compared to regular creatine monohydrate, which is probably around 98 to 99% pure. If that's something that you consider to be important, you might want to consider using CreaPure. Micronized creatine is creatine that, funnily enough, has been micronized, which means the powder has been made even finer. So you get smaller and more particles, which gives a greater surface area than regular creatine, which is supposed to substantially increase the absorption and reduce the risk of stomach upsets. So if regular creatine monohydrate gives you stomach upsets, then it might be worth trying micronized creatine to see if it's better tolerated. The thing is, regular creatine monohydrate is already absorbed pretty well, and if it doesn't cause any stomach upsets, I wouldn't really consider it important to look for micronized creatine specifically. Why is it important to drink lots of water with creatine? This is one thing we hear all the time about creatine. If you take it, you have to drink loads of water or your body is going to explode. Or something like that. It's a misunderstanding that is based on the fact that creatine can cause some water retention in some people. People assume that it's absorbing water from your body, so you need to drink a load of extra water to stop it doing something. What that something is, nobody actually ever explains. Yes, creatine can cause people to hold onto a little extra water, maybe 500 milliliters to a liter of extra body water. An effect that I should point out only happens in some people. But that doesn't mean that you need to start drinking gallons and gallons of water because you're taking creatine. In case you didn't know, you're supposed to drink plenty of water anyway. It's a pretty well-known recommendation. Just do that. What if you miss a day or a week? Your muscles will probably fall off. In reality, it really doesn't matter. Like I mentioned earlier, it can take four to six weeks for your creatine levels to drop to normal after you stop taking creatine completely. So missing a day, it's not a big deal. Missing a week is not a huge deal either because you can just start taking it again. Don't worry about it all that much. What about hair loss? This is a classic example of how research can be taken out of context and sensationalized so much that people never forget it. There was one study that showed that taking creatine leads to an increase in DHT or dihydrotestosterone. DHT is a metabolite of testosterone that plays a role in balding and hair loss. So people lost their minds when the results were made public. Because of that one study, many people assume that creatine must cause hair loss, but there are no, let me say that again, no direct studies that show this. Even with that said, DHT is only associated with hair loss in people who are genetically predisposed to lose hair, something that's known as androgenic alopecia for anyone who's interested. And we don't have much control over the genetic lottery. So yeah, there is no conclusive evidence to say creatine causes people to lose their hair. And if you already have the genes for hair loss, well, I'm sorry, but there's not a lot you can do about that. What about creatine pills? They're just a convenient way to take creatine if you don't like the powder. The only issue is you usually need to take a lot of them to get your five grams, and they can be a little bit more expensive. Should I take it if I'm just training at home? Maybe ask yourself this. Do you want the benefits of creatine? Increased power output, higher training quality, which could lead to better strength and muscle growth. If the answer is yes, then you should consider taking creatine. You don't need to be training in the gym every day of the week to reap the benefits. What about weight gain? I mentioned earlier that creatine causes you to hold on to more water but not everybody experiences it. In general, a lot of that water gets stored in your muscles, both in and around the muscle cells and leads to the muscles looking bigger or fuller. So a lot of people notice their physiques look a little better when they start taking creatine. And remember, weight gain is not necessarily a bad thing. The only time weight gain might be a problem is if you're competing in a weight sensitive sport like rock climbing or boxing. In that case, you need to weigh the pros of better performance with the risk of not making your weight. And the big one, what can I take my creatine with? I have to admit, I was fairly surprised by how many people asked this. Do you want it with a protein shake? Take it. Do you want it with a mass gainer? Take it. Orange juice? Take it. Champagne? Who am I to judge your lifestyle? Take it. It really doesn't matter. The only things to consider is not to add it to food or drink before you heat it, and maybe don't take it with high doses of caffeine like some pre-workouts, just because of the possible stomach upsets that we mentioned earlier. Don't overcomplicate it. Just take it daily and reap the benefits. So what do you think? Did that finally answer all your creatine questions? 
If not, remember to check out my other two videos on what creatine does and how to take it. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.